Hi, welcome back to our channel, The Dental Educators. In today's lecture, we will be discussing about the particular kind of landmark which is known as ridges. The ridges is a particular feature which you see in all of the teeth, nearly in all of the anterior and the posterior teeth. But we have different kind of ridges which we will see in all of the teeth. So we will discuss what is a ridge in today's lecture and how many ridges or how many types of ridges are seen in different type of teeth. So, now what is a ridge? The basic definition to define a ridge is that the ridge is a linear elevation which you see on the tooth surface. So it is named according to its location like in these images you can see we have different kind of examples. Now the first image if you see this image so it's we see elevation on the crown surface of the canine on the labial aspect so it will be referred as the labial ridge. Now there is an elevation on the lingual aspect of the canine that will be referred as the lingual ridge. Now similarly we see some ridges at the borders of the molars and the anterior teeth that is the incisors and the canines these are referred as the marginal ridges in addition to that you see some triangular kind of ridges which are prominent in the posterior teeth they are referred as triangular ridges and once they join together they are referred as transverse ridge in addition to that we have another kind of ridge which we see on the posterior teeth that is on the premolars that is referred as the buccal ridge so we will be discussing about each of these ridges separately in the coming slides. So starting with the first kind of ridge that is known as the labial ridge. So if you look at the classical definition for the labial ridge, the labial ridge is defined as the ridge which runs cervico-incisally. Cervico-incisally means from the cervical line, it runs towards the incisal surface. Okay, So it's run from the cervico, uh, cervical line towards the incisor ledge area so that is referred as the labial ridge as the canine is the anterior tooth that's why we refer it as a labial ridge so you can see it's a prominent labial ridge which you can see on this canine similarly on the another model demonstration you can see we have a labial ridge which is present in both the maxillary and the mandibular canine now going quickly through the video demonstration you can see on the model you have a labial ridge which is prominent on the canine on the maxillary canine it's running cervical incisally now on the mandibular canine as well it is running cervical incisally both on the right and the left canines you see this prominent kind of ridge on the canine surface as it is on the anterior tooth therefore it is referred as the labial ridge now going on to the another kind of ridge which is known as the buccal ridge now the buccal ridge also runs vertically in the cervical incisal direction but on the buccal surfaces of the premolar. So on the premolars, this surface is the buccal surface or the facial surface of the premolar is referred as the buccal surface. Therefore the prominent elevation which you see on the buccal surface of the premolar, this is known as the buccal ridge. Similar to the labial ridge, it is also running in the cervical incisal direction direction or you can say in particular cervical occlusal as this is for the posterior teeth. Cervical incisal term is basically used for the anterior tooth whereas cervical occlusal is used for the posterior tooth. Okay, So we can see we have a prominent buccal ridge which is present in the case of the premolars but in the case of the canines the green marking is basically representing the labial ridge. Now when we go quickly through the video demonstration you can see here that we have both of the ridges which are marked the labial and the buccal ridge now the green one as we discussed previously is the labial ridge whereas the brown one is representing the buccal ridge as it's present on the premolar so you can see we have a prominent buccal ridge which is present on both of the first premolar now again the green one are the labial ridges whereas when we talk about the brown markings they are representing the buccal ridge as they are prominent on the premolars Now when we go to another kind of ridge which is present on the lingual surface of the tooth surface so that is referred as the lingual ridge and is this present on the lingual surface so if you see in this 
image you can see we have green markings which are on the canines again but on the lingual surface that's why we refer them as the lingual ridge so what is the direction of this lingual ridge on this canine it runs against cervical incisally as this is the anterior tooth in the canines on the lingual surface it runs cervical from the cervical line towards the incisal edge so in both of the maxillary and the mandibular canine from the cervical line towards the incisal edge now going on quickly through the video demonstration we can clearly see the example for this lingual ridge now when you see for the maxillary arch you can see a prominent green line it's extending from the cingulum of the canine towards the incisal edge similarly on the another canine it's quite evident it's extending from the cervical area that is from the cingulum towards the incisal edge the lingual ridge is also prominent in the case of the mandibular canines but it's much more bulky and much more prominent in the maxillary canine so you can see again we have a green marking which is running cervical incisally representing the lingual ridge in both of the mandibular canines which extend from the cingulum towards the incisal edge area now we have another kind of ridge which is known as the marginal ridge margin what does the word margin means that it's forming the border okay always we make up the margins uh, for something like uh, borders for something so we have some rounded borders of enamel to form the mesial and distal margins on the occlusal surfaces of premolars and molars and similarly mesial and distal margins on the lingual surface of incisors and canines as well so if you see this the model or the image which we have seen marked on the image you can see the black linings are basically representing the marginal ridges okay so we have different type of marginal ridges which we see on the lingual aspect on of the anterior tip that is the incisors and canines similarly on the occlusal surface of the posterior teeth we also see the marginal ridges which are making up the borders so they are named accordingly the marginal ridge which is closer to the midline if you see we have a midline which is in the center here so the marginal ridge which is closer to the midline it will be referred as the mesial marginal ridge whereas the marginal ridge for the central incisor which is away from the midline this one which is the again the black lining this will be referred as the distal marginal ridge now again the marginal ridge for the lateral incisor which is closer to the midline this will be referred as the mesial marginal ridge whereas the marginal ridge which is away from the midline this marginal ridge for the lateral incisor will be referred as the distal marginal ridge now you can see we have some marginal ridges in the posterior teeth as well similar to the anterior teeth the marginal ridge on the occlusal surface of posterior teeth closer to the midline it will be referred as the mesial marginal ridge as we can see on the second maxillary molar whereas the marginal ridge which is away from the midline like for the example of the second maxillary molar this will be referred as the distal marginal ridge now let's go quickly with the video demonstration representing the different kind of marginal ridges in all of the anterior and the posterior teeth now when you look at this the border of the incisors are basically marked by some rounded elevations so these are referred as the marginal ridges okay so the marginal ridge of the central and the lateral incisor there are two marginal ridges okay similarly on the lateral incisors you have two that on the canines as well you have two marginal ridges on the premolars and the molars on the occlusal surface you have two marginal ridges mesial and distal mesial and distal and they are named accordingly the marginal ridges which uh, is closer to the midline that will be named as the mesial marginal ridge as we can see in the central incisor of the first quadrant whereas of the marginal ridge which is away from the midline this marginal ridge will be referred as the distal marginal ridge similarly on the lateral incisor this marginal ridge closer to the midline will be referred as mesial whereas the other marginal ridge which is away from the midline this is not closer this is away from the midline will be referred as a distal marginal ridge so you have mesial distal 
marginal ridges which are present in the second quadrant as well. Similar to the maxillary arch, we have some marginal ridges which are present on the mandibular arch as well. So when you see here, you have marginal ridges which are marked on the central lateral incisors, the canines uh, of the mandibular arch as well for both of the sides. So these are referred as the marginal ridges. Similarly, you see some marginal ridges which are present on the occlusal surface of the posterior molars of the mandibular arch. Okay, so they are named accordingly. Again, the marginal ridge which is closer to the midline will be referred as the mesial marginal ridge. So the marginal ridge which is away from the midline will be referred as the distal marginal ridge for lateral incisors. Similarly, mesial distal, mesial distal for the premolars, mesial distal. Again, for the molars, you see the same pattern that we have two marginal ridges. One is the mesial and the other one is known as the distal marginal ridge which is away from the midline. So you can see again in the diagrammatic representation, the marginal ridge which is seen closer to the midline, it's referred as the mesial marginal ridge, whereas the marginal ridge which is away from the midline on this first maxillary premolar, first maxillary molar, it's referred as the distal marginal ridge. Now there is another kind of ridge which we see in particular on the posterior teeth that is the molars and the premolars that is known as the triangular ridge so what is a triangular ridge triangular as the word suggests that it must be triangular in shape okay so we have a triangular kind of shape ridge which descends or you can say it starts from the cuspal tip so it starts from the cuspal tips of the premolars on the molars and goes towards the central part on the occlusal surface so you can see we have one triangular ridge which is present on this side the other triangular ridge is present on the other side so you have two triangular ridges you can see on the premolars so they are named accordingly according to the side on which they are present like the triangular ridge which is present on the buccal side like this triangular ridge will be referred as the buccal triangular ridge as this is on the buccal cusp Whereas the triangular ridge which is present on the lingual cusp, this will be referred as the lingual triangular ridge. Similarly, in the first premolar as well, you can see we have a triangular ridge which is present on the buccal cusp, a triangular shaped kind of ridge. Similarly, you have a triangular kind of shaped ridge which is present on the lingual cusp. So, there it's referred as the lingual triangular ridge. You can see a classical example in the mandibular arch as well. You have four triangular ridge in the second pre second molar so you can see you have one disto buccal triangular ridge one disto lingual triangular ridge so it will be referred as named accordingly then you have two triangular ridges on the mesial side as well so you will call this triangular ridge as mesio lingual triangular ridge whereas this will be referred as the mesio buccal triangular ridge okay so you have triangular ridges and always in the posterior teeth they are not present on the anterior teeth now let's go through the video demonstration now you can see here we have classical representation for the triangular ridges in the, both the maxillary and the mandibular arch some of the triangular ridges are marked in the premolar so you can see it's a kind of in a triangular shape you can see it's a kind of a triangular shape whereas the tip of the triangle is towards the cuspal tip so you can see another triangular ridge is on the lingual cusp so it will be referred as the lingual triangular ridge on the first maxillary premolar similar to the first maxillary premolar you have two triangular ridges on the second maxillary premolar so buccal and lingual triangular ridge then on the first premolar of the second quadrant you can see we have two triangular ridges on both first and second premolar now when you look at the mandibular arch you can see we have some triangular ridges which are present in all of the posterior teeth. So in the premolars again you can see you have the buccal triangular ridge. It's triangular in shape and on the lingual aspect as well you have a lingual triangular ridge. So buccal and here on the first premolar you can see we have a lingual triangular ridge. Now in the case of the mandibular second molar you can see you have four triangular ridges. Two on the buccal side. And two on the lingual side one two three four so you have in total four triangular ridges which are clearly evident in the case of the mandibular second molar now again you have two triangular ridges which we can see in the case of the two mandibular premolars of the fourth quadrant 
Now there is another kind of characteristic feature which is known as a transverse ridge. What does the word transverse means? Transverse means through and through. Okay, it's transversing, it's continuous. So when two triangular ridges, they are fused or joined together, it's referred as a transverse ridge. So when the buccal and the lingual triangular ridge, both of them join together, it's referred as a transverse ridge. So you can see in these models or the images which we are displaying here, it appears to be a continuous line. It doesn't appear to be separate. Therefore, once both of the triangular ridges, they join together, we also call it as the transverse ridge. So like example, we have two triangular ridges here, the lingual triangular ridge and the buccal triangular ridge, which is present on the buccal cusp. As they are joined together, this type of characteristic feature is referred as a transverse ridge. Now let's go quickly with the video demonstration. So again, if you see in the maxillary arch, in the case of the premolars, you have very nice triangular ridges which are clearly seen. So you have two triangular ridges like the buccal and the lingual triangular ridge. They are joining in the midline on the occlusal surface and it appears to be a continuous ridge. Okay, So the buccal and lingual they join together to form up a continuous ridge which is known as the transverse ridge. Similarly on the mandib maxillary second premolar you see a continuous ridge that is known as transverse ridge both on the second quadrant as well you see both of the triangular ridges have joined together in the premolars now in the mandibular arch when you look at the video demonstration you can see here you have transverse ridge which is prominent in the second premolar as well so the buccal and lingual triangular ridges they join together to the form the transverse ridge. Similarly, in the first premolar, you can see we have a transverse ridge. In the case of the mandibular second molar, we have two transverse ridges on both uh, of the sides, that is the third and the fourth quadrant. You can see it's clearly evident. Both of the transverse ridge are clearly evident on the second molars of the mandibular arch. You can see it on the fourth quadrant as well for the case of the premolars. So the last type of ridge which we see is known as the oblique ridge. Now what is the oblique ridge? As the word suggests, the oblique ridge is a ridge which is seen in an oblique direction. Okay. So the oblique ridge is usually seen only on the occlusal surfaces of the maxillary molars. It is usually formed by the union of two triangular ridges. A triangular ridge which is observed on the mesiolingual cusp and the triangular ridge which is observed on the distobuccal cusp. So the two triangular ridges on the mesiolingual and the distobuccal cusp they meet to each other in an oblique direction. So that helps in the formation of an oblique ridge. So you can see the oblique ridges are prominent in the case of the maxillary first molar. So in the maxillary first molar of both of the sides, that is the first and the second quadrant, it's quite prominent. So let's go through the quick video demonstration here you can see we have two triangular ridges, one triangular ridge on the distal buccal cusp, the other triangular ridge which we see on the mesiolingual cusp. Both of these triangular ridges, they are meeting to each other to help in the formation of a structure which is known as an oblique ridge. So that's all for the ridges in today's lecture. In the upcoming lecture, we will be discussing about different types of landmarks which we see on the tooth surface so stay tuned with the channel the dental educators and keep posting your questions so that uh, we can make it much better and give you more like better lectures which are required by you for